Hey, good morning. This is Pastor Harvey Beck. I'm at Lester Memorial Methodist Church. We're glad you're joining us to do a Wednesday devotion. So today is Wednesday, July the 10th, uh, 2024. It is a special day in my dad's life, so shout out to him. Uh, He listens to this devotion often, so today's his birthday. He's turning 86 years old, thankful for every year. So uh, July the 10th, 1938. He came into this world. So anyway, a shout out to him on his birthday. Uh, on this day, I'm going to probably, well, I am going to preach on forgiveness, some some form of a sermon on forgiveness this coming Sunday. But um, I got to thinking about this, uh, this passage in John 21. Now, I've probably shared part of this with you before, but and you've heard it before, but uh, I looked over on a table I have just off to my right. I have... Um, this plate that someone gave me after I had preached a sermon from the Gospel of John, John 21st chapter, come and have breakfast. And so I know when I shared in that sermon, I shared part of my own personal testimony of how God used that passage as one of the key passages. There were three. This was one of them. When God called me into ministry back during 1986 and 87 especially, and then I answered the call to preach in 1988. But I often, the Holy Spirit would refer me back to John 21. Now, Jesus has risen from the dead. In fact, he's shown himself to disciples. It's going to be the third time. They're still really confused about everything. Their Savior has died, and they were not expecting that. Now he's come back from the dead and to talk to them. And now what? And so um, they were still seeking guidance and peace and all the that was going on. They were not certain. So they went back to something that was familiar, especially Simon Peter and some of his buddies. This is all in John 21. They went fishing. In fact, that picture you see up there with is a scene with them in the boat fishing. And uh, it was Jesus. There were many illustrations there on the Sea of Galilee. But I got to stand in that spot when we went to Israel. I asked our guide, We'll be near the place where Jesus fed breakfast to the disciples. He said, oh, yeah, we're going there tomorrow. Uh, I wept standing there at that place and thinking about that passage of how many times God had used it. And instead of Jesus asking Simon Peter around that breakfast scene at the Sea of Galilee, I wouldn't I wouldn't hear him saying, Simon Peter, do you love me? It was Harvey, do you love me? Then feed my sheep. So some of you have heard me share that testimony, but I shared that sermon basically with that, and I wished, I do not know who gave me this, so if you listen to this devotion, I apologize. I didn't write on, normally when somebody gives me something, I write on the back who gave it to me, and so um, I think I know, and I think I'm going to try to find out for sure, but um, anyway, they gave me this plate, which is symbolic and has statements about come and have breakfast, uh, and It is one of the coolest scenes to me in the Bible. Here God has died for all of our sins, and I'm going to talk about forgiveness, and yet here he is helping these disciples who are scattered and uncertain and said, come and eat breakfast with me. And you know, or if you don't know, he asked them a very important question. In fact, it's the most important question he'll ever ask you. The same one he asked Simon Peter, He repeated it three times, and the Greek, he put it at a deeper level each time time he asked it, which is true with us. You know the question, do you love me? That's what he asked. That that was it. That's all we have at that breakfast table. Come and eat breakfast. And then he asked, do you love me? Simon Peter, do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. Now, it is often preached, and I I think it's a good way to preach it. I think it is a reminder, and since I'm going to preach on forgiveness Sunday, we know that only a few days earlier, Simon Peter said, I'll die with you. And Jesus said, let me tell you something. Before the rooster crows in the morning, you're going to deny me three times. We know what happened. It's written in the Gospels. People came up, hey, weren't you with that? G-? Nope, don't know him. Never been around him. So he denied Jesus three times, and then the third time the rooster crowed, and he remembered what Jesus said, and he went out and he wept bitterly. So 
Three times he denied him. And then we have this scene here where three times Jesus asked him, do you love me? And so many have tied that together and say, was that, was that directed towards Simon Peter? Did he ask him three times because he had denied him three times? It doesn't specifically say that in the Bible, but I certainly know that it very well could have been. And I do know from personal experience in pastoring people that there are some times we are so grateful and we know we've done something wrong, we have sinned, and we pray and we ask for forgiveness, that the Holy Spirit comes, Jesus' presence comes to us in a powerful way, maybe within minutes or moments of our asking for forgiveness. It might be the next day or so, but there is a joy and a grace that comes and a reassurance that comes of his forgiveness. And so... Uh, I think that it is likely that's why Jesus asked it, but nonetheless, he asked it, and it's the most important question. And the other thing is Simon Peter needed forgiving, and so do you. I don't know if you know Jesus Christ, but one of the reasons he died on the cross was so you can be forgiven, because otherwise we have no chance. There is a psalm in Psalm 130, and I'll probably end up using this in the sermon uh, but it talks about this. This is the way it says it in Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cried to you, O God, and, and Lord, please hear my cry. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. If thou, O Lord, God, if you were to mark or you were to keep iniquities or sin, if you were to mark them all down and hold them against us forever, for eternity, then who could stand? The obvious answer is nobody. And then he answers, he says, but there is forgiveness with you, O God, and in his word I do hope. For there is forgiveness with thee, O God. So I hope you know that forgiveness, that there is forgiveness with God. And uh, it is a wonderful thing to experience, and unfortunately because we sin even after we're saved, we come back to Jesus and we say it in the Lord's Prayer every time we pray it. Forgive us of our trespasses. Thank God we can pray that. And thank God we've got a God who takes us to breakfast and asks us, do you love me? Lord, you know I love you. Then feed my sheep. Do something about that love. Thank God for forgiveness. And uh, again, if you're listening or if you know, if, if you can remember at which church I received this and who gave it to me, let me know. Uh, John 21, great, great chapter, one of my favorite chapters in the whole Bible, and I think one of the most powerful stories is when God had breakfast with those guys, but he reminded Simon Peter of the power of his forgiveness and the power of his love. Thank God we've got a God who forgives. Love you. Hope you're forgiven today, and if you haven't, ask him to forgive you right now. Repent of it. And I pray you receive that anointing of joy that comes when you know that you know that you know that you're forgiven and you're redeemed. Thank God we've got a God who went to the cross. Love you. Have a golden day.